This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Elite Desk 705 G4 Mini, and for some bizarre moon reason, there's a gang of them on Amazon and eBay right now. That means I was able to yoink this AMD Ryzen 2400GE 4-core 8-thread CPU with Vega 8 graphics, 8 gigajoules of memory RAM, and a 200 gig SSD in a 1 liter package for 120 wet stinky caches. Now on the front, we get two USB 3.1 holes and one Type-C, around back four more of those USBs, and not one, not two, three display ports. Two come as standard, but you can swap the third one out with like HDMI, a serial port, SFP, or even a dedicated GPU. But you should really think of this as your starter kit, because there's a couple of things you're going to need to upgrade, maybe even repair. Starting with this fan. This guy's always on, and that means it's going to begin making diseased fan noises sooner than later. Even if yours is perfectly fine, go ahead and order a spare, or procrastinate. But when yours begins screeching like a rabbit emu on a methamphetamine binge at 2 o'clock in the morning, I want you to think about old man Vin, trying to warn you. But hey, while we're here, we might as well pop in another 8 gigs of memory RAM so we can take advantage of that dual channel business. It's the cheapest, easiest performance boost you can do for any AMD system. And it's probably a good idea to go ahead and give the CPU a repaste. Pop off these three screws, give it a clean and apply some fresh processor lube, and you're good to go. Let's have a look at the NVMe drive hidden under the SSD cage. Mine came with a Samsung PM961, which looks a little generic, doesn't it? It's an OEM version of the 960 EVO, but I don't know how long it's been running. Too lazy to check, so I'm going to replace it with a fresh one. With that done, let's get it plugged in, put some Linux on it, and run some benchmarks. Smash that escape button, fam. Hop into the BIOS and head over to the boot options, and we want to slide that USB right up to the top, and we're going to head back over to main and give it a save. After that, it's just a regular, ordinary, unexciting Debian install. Well, all right, check this out. It picked up the Wi-Fi during the install. And you know what? That was kind of exciting. We all know audio doesn't work on Linux, but it kind of did in this case, and that's awesome. Both Intel and AMD audio controllers were detected by ELSA, and that means they're going to work with Pulse Audio, Pipe Wire, Jack, basically anything you throw at it. Moving on to the network, like we saw during the install, Wi-Fi is good to go out of the box. Both 2.4 and 5G networks popped right up. And if Wi-Fi is not your thing, don't worry. Plug in your ether noodle and you're going to get 900 plus megabits per second up and down. Let's go ahead and move on to disk performance. I found this tool. I think it might be familiar for Windows users. I don't know. It looks like that thing you guys use is pretty neat. Anyway, our little NVMe drive manages 2.2 gig read and 1.2 gig write, along with 46 read and 184 write with 4K randoms. Nothing shocking, but hey, man, that's not bad. All right, when it comes to power, doing precisely f and or all, the HP Elite Desk 705 G4 Mini noms about 12.2 watts on average. And jumping all the way up to 42.26 watts when everything's turned to 11, but you know what? That's still not bad. How useless is this thing in a video? You don't know how close the mic is or how much I've boosted the audio in post. You just get some number digits that say DB at the end, right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to grab a scientific audio calibration device laying around your house, and I want you to adjust the volume at home so it matches this IRL clickiness. At idle, the HP Elite Desk is gently whispering sweet nothings around 36 dBA. Sounds a little something like this. And when we cut things all the way up to 11, things get a wee shouty, averaging about 50 dBA. Since I know someone is going to ask, yes, a quad-core 8-thread Ryzen 2400G can, in fact, play 4K video. It's even a better love story when you enable hardware acceleration. And I bet you thought I forgot about YouTube. I didn't. No problems here outside of the occasional drop frame, but that's gonna happen on any system. Just maybe you were thinking about turning one of these critters into a low-cost digital audio workstation, and you know what? You could do a lot worse. 
The Elite Desk was able to handle the Reaper session I used to record podcast and live stream. We're talking 28 plugins, 12 tracks, running at a 128 buffer at a 48k sample rate. And that means we only got 2.67 milliseconds to get things done. But we're pulling it off. Just. Welcome to the part of the video where people are going to inform me that Geekbench is not a proper benchmark. Anyway, in a single channel memory configuration, the Elite Desk 705 scores 1149 single threaded and 3122 multi. But in a dual channel configuration, the Elite Desk does 1198 single threaded and 3676 in multi. And of course, the mighty furry donut manages a whopping, a respectable, a powerful, 11 frames per second in a single channel memory configuration, but that does jump all the way up to 21 when you put that second stick of memory RAM in. And of course, this is a 720p low. Moving on to the cruel and unusual punishment segment, here's the Elite Desk attempting to run Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 720p lowest. And surprisingly, it gets 22 FPS in single channel memory configuration, and look at that, 32 FPS in dual channel. That's wild. And to conclude this seriously, at a second stick of memory RAM segment, we have Dirt running at 720p low, cranking out 81.26 FPS in that single channel memory config, and a borderline respectable 112.52 in dual. Here we are at the end, so let me show you my Raspberry Pi 48 gig. It's the video conferencing server I use for all my podcasts, even kitted out with the SSD in this thermally absorbent case. You know what? It still struggles to keep up. And on top of all that, when you add in these extra bits, it ended up costing more than I paid for the Elite Desk. And that makes this guy a problem. Not for us. Nay, it is great for us. This is a problem for beefy single board computer manufacturers like Raspberry Pi, Orange Pi, Asus, Odroid, and the like, because when it comes to performance, it's not even a competition. But Finn, performance per what? You know what? I hear you. But this is for my brothers and sisters who are far more interested in PPPITA, performance per pain in the ass. Now, I love spending an afternoon playing around with ARM, Getting things like, hey, this Jitsi server up and running on Raspberry Pi 4, but sometimes I just need to get shit done. This HP Elite Desk 705 G4 Mini excels at just that. It even passes the pick any two test. Small, cheap, fast. We got a nook. It is small. It is fast, but it ain't cheap. You got a Raspberry Pi 4, Raspberry Pi 5. You know what? It is cheap. It is small, but it ain't fast. No, not at all. This Elite Desk 705, it's small-ish, it is cheap, and oh my, it is quite fast. And at the end of the day, it's a good server, it's a good desktop, it's an excellent media center, and while it might struggle with 3D titles, it definitely has the ability to crush an 8 2D games. And on top of that, all of this hardware, it knows how to Linux out of the box. Link in the description to the store I bought this one from. And also, I'll make you a deal. This video manages to do, let's say, not so badly. I'll do another one on the thing we probably shouldn't even mention. The discrete GPU. See you next time.